Hi there. Today, our story is about not just an ordinary person. Although he did look like just your common everyday person, most experts consider him to be the ancestor of what will be discussed today. It was the era of hacking and social engineering. Surprisingly, he did not start in the age of advanced technology, but in his time, phones were still rotary dial phones and computers, they could only be seen on TV. But nothing could stop this young man. For him, it was a big game of an exciting adventure, but not a violation of the law. In addition, 30 years ago, hacking was not considered a crime at all, but rather encouraged by the authorities. After all, young people developed their intelligence. What could go wrong with that? But first things first. In 1963, a boy named Kevin Mitnick was born in Van Nuys, California. His father left their family in 1968 when Kevin was only five years old, so his mother had to work most of the time. Kevin did not attract attention to himself and was an ordinary child, but by the age of 12, had a real hobby. Many loved to play ball or just frolic on the street, but Kevin, he liked to ride on buses. He liked to look at the city from the window, but since he had very little money, he had to put some aside to buy a ticket. One particular time when he was riding on a bus and considering how to pay for a ticket, it was then that this boy came up with a tricky way to get around the whole system and save money on travel. He realized that the checking system was an unusual ticket hole puncher that the driver used and it depended on the day's time and route. But to translate the plans into reality, he needed to find a similar hole punch and new tickets, or he could just use unused tickets from the box. But where could he get this type of hole punch? He was a very smart boy, and so as it happened, he asked the talkative driver where to get such a device. And the man, without a second thought, gave him the secret. After a while, the first trick of Kevin's was successful, and the student rode free of charge on many bus routes. He was very proud of this achievement and considered himself a genius. He was enrolled at a school and became part of the Radio Amateur Club, where he became friends with another boy and told him about his tricky plan with the tickets. The kid smiled and said that he still had something to learn. The kid became friends with Kevin and showed him a lot of amazing things with the telephone system, with which he could do anything. As it turned out, his new friend was self-taught and had already mastered freaking, the art of hacking the telephone network. His new friend showed him how to use a secret number for making long distance calls absolutely free. And the boy soon introduced him to the rest of the freakers who became an example for Mitnick. The boy listened to how his new friends called the telephone companies, how they use small tricks and slang words to sound authentic and impressive. Soon Kevin himself began to practice freaking. He turned one such trick with a teacher of the computer courses, which he was not able to take due to his age. Using his voice in tone dialing acting on behalf of another person, he learned everything about the teacher and came to him with information. The teacher was so impressed with this kid's ability that despite his age, he did take him on as a student. But in the meantime, Kevin was perfecting his skills. At the age of 14, Kevin learned how to redirect a home telephone signal to a payphone, rejoicing at the fact that the home phone owners were asked to drop 10 cents before the conversation. By the age of 15, the phones did not present difficulties for Kevin anymore. He knew how to make calls for free and soon this entertainment bored him. He began to sit for long periods of time in the school computer classroom studying manuals. In 1980, Kevin made his first hack into the school's local network, but despite the fact that he had the opportunity to correct his grades, he did not do this since he was only interested in the hacking process. The result was secondary. When Kevin was 16, the telephone company literally pulled the telephone wire out of his apartment, furious that the guy had hacked their system. They did it because there was no other legitimate ways to influence this hacker. But the resourceful boy was not at a loss. He lived with his mother in apartment number 13. So he simply went to the hardware store and bought two numbers and a letter, 
so he added the number and made it apartment 12B. So he managed to obtain a new service contract with a telephone company. In 1979, Mitnick received his first serious mission to be rightfully called a hacker. He met a group of young hackers who in turn invited him to join their community. But for this, it was necessary to pass a test that would show what he was capable of. The task was to hack into the Digital Equipment Corporation computer system. At that time, the company had the most effective security system. They were not able to predict that they could be hacked. Kevin got the username and password and easily completed the task in five minutes. After that, Kevin became a legend among hackers. However, Mitnick was most interested in telephones. And as expected, his first problems soon began. Soon the group of hackers in which Kevin was associated with was handed over to the authorities by a girl of one of the participants. Kevin was sentenced to three months in a penal colony for minors and a year of probation. However, while in prison, Kevin did not waste his time at all. By the time of his release, he had all the knowledge on the telephone networks that the best specialist in America had. Kevin became a virtuoso of telephone hacking. He could create unregistered phone numbers, call from someone else's number, listen and disconnect conversations. Throughout the 80s, the guy perfected his abilities. Having settled in California, he made various computer and telephone jokes, skillfully sweeping the traces of his deeds. He managed to take cover from responsibility for a long time, but in December of 1987, he was again out of luck. One of his friends had turned him over to the police. The reason was envy, because no one could reach the level of Kevin. After that, continuous prison sentences began. After another term for illegal access to the ARPANET network, the predecessor of the internet, Mitnick seemed to calm down. But the desire to find out what he was capable of doing and succeeding at, he continued at his game. At the trial, the head of the Computer Crime Police Department said that Mitnick is several levels higher than what was characterized for an ordinary hacker. Kevin was released on probation in 1990. As a basic condition, he was forbidden to touch the computer, but soon Kevin was at it again. The officer who was looking after Kevin had his access blocked, complete chaos reigned in the judge's credit account, and all references to Kevin's arrest and sentence disappeared from the court's main computers. In 1992, Kevin Mitnick disappears from the field of view of the FBI employees, who tirelessly followed the activities of the hacker. All this time while the feds were looking for the hacker across the country, Kevin sat in Southern California, connecting the state telephone system. He could listen to the FBI agents and was ahead of them every time by a few steps. In 1994, authorities suspected him of stealing Motorola's cellular control software. On the night of December 25, 1994, Mitnick showed the world what he was capable of. He hacked into the home computer of Sutumu Shimomura a leading American computer security specialist. In the beginning, Mitnick hacked the computer at Loyola University in Chicago, from where it was possible to access the Shimomura computer. Kevin successfully copied hundreds of classified files. Catching Mitnick became a matter of honor for Shimomura, because the fact of hacking undermined his professional reputation, the best specialist in computer security in the world. On the night of February 15, 1995, the hacker was arrested. Many say that he surrendered voluntarily because to catch him was almost impossible. He was always one step ahead. Kevin was charged with 23 fraud charges in excess of over $80 million. Kevin Mitnick has become a legend in the narrow circles of the United States. Once a funny story was printed, in Los Angeles, Mitnick was able to reprogram the telephone network so that agents tracking his calls burst not into his home but into an immigrant's home from the Middle East who was watching television at his home peacefully. Kevin spent a total of five years in prison, of which a whole year in solitary confinement. The prosecutors convinced the judge that if Mitnick was given a phone, he could easily reach the command of the aerospace defense and using a whistle on the receiver would launch an intercontinental ballistic missile. Kevin was engaged in hacking for pleasure and sports interest and did not steal absolutely anything. 
He could transfer hundreds of millions of dollars in his account in five minutes. But even on the run, he went to work regularly and had a modest, unremarkable technician's job at a medical center. While Kevin was in prison, many books of various authors appeared about him. Shortly after the sentencing of Mitnick, Shimamura published a book where he said that Kevin had no equal to date. In January 2000, Kevin was released and never returned to hacking activities again. Since 2003, he is officially allowed to use the network and telephones. Since 2010, Kevin Mitnick has been dealing with the protection of computer systems. He is the founder of Defense Thinking, a computer and network security company and advises federal authorities, the FBI and the CIA. Kevin also helps the police. One day, a telephone terrorist showed up in Michigan. He called local schools with threats and reports. They could not find him for a long time, but when the investigator in desperation turned to the World Wide Web for help, none other than Mitnick responded to his request, and soon, the bully was arrested. The police department thanked Mitnick for his help. Even now, Mitnick's popularity is so high that his father successfully sells some of Kevin's items through online auctions, where people happily buy them for hundreds of thousands of dollars. In an interview with Forbes magazine, he said that his main task was not to get rich or become popular, but to find weaknesses in the system and help eliminate them. And in many ways, this is true. After all, it was after his hacks that programs managed to prevent many cases of penetration into the system. He seemed to point out all the flaws and at the same time did not take anything for personal enrichment. This is such an interesting story of a man who transformed the whole world of computer security. Did you like this story? Be sure to write about it in the comments. Don't forget to support this video with a like. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.